how to use N8N automation system and connect it with JotForm. That way you can automate multiple processes using N8N. So let me show you what I'm talking about on my desktop right now. Welcome to JotForm. My name is George and today I'm going to show you how to use N8N using JotForm to automate processes. This way you can connect with other automation systems that will integrate beautifully with JotForm. If you want to send the contact to another CRM, that is possible. Do you want to send it to an email marketing system? Well, that is possible also using N8N. Now, one of the beauties about N8N is that they have a free version. This way, it's an open source that lets you install it on your desktop, install it on your server, or if you'd like to use the paid cloud service. So it's pretty useful that we have all of this. So let's get started with this tutorial. Let's get started by building our form that we're going to use with our automation system N8N. Okay, so let's create a brand new form and we are going to start from scratch, classic form. And in this case, we are going to first name this form so we can locate it later on. So N8N, that's what we're going to call it. And we're gonna add a basic few elements. So we're gonna add full name, email, it's at the phone number. Let's drag it to the top. There we go. And we are going to keep it simple. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Now, next thing we're gonna do is head on over to the N88 system. Just to show you really quickly the options that you have available here. So let's scroll down here. There's three versions available of N8N. The first one is the cloud version, which is a paid version. You don't have to install anything and all you have to do is pay the monthly subscription and start using it. If you'd like to use the desktop app, which is what we're going to use right now, it's completely free and you can automate your processes. There's also the self-hosted version, which is also free, no limits, but you install it on your server. It's a process that you have to install and you're ready to use it on your own domain and server. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our N88, okay? Let's get started with the first process. Let's go into a new process, okay? So this is a brand new N8N process. And the first thing that we want to do, well, it's connect JotForm because we want to automate the processes with the information that we are going to receive from JotForm. So that means that if we're going to receive the name, the phone number and email, well, what do we want to do with that information? Where do we want to send it? So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is click on this little plus sign, which is called a node, okay? And in the node, we have several options available. We have the all, and we can see the core nodes. We have suggested nodes, analytics, depending on what you want to connect with, you'll have them available here. So all we have to do is search for the process that we want to connect. In this case, we want to connect with JotForm. So it's the JotForm trigger. Let's go ahead and select it. And the first thing that we want to do, well, it's connect to our JotForm account. And this is going to ask us for the API key. And that is found on our JotForm account. So let's head over to JotForm. Okay, let's go back. Well, we're gonna click on the avatar. Let's click on the gear icon. There we go. And there's a little section over here on the left menu. It says API. Let's click on that. Here we go. We are going to create a new API key. Let's go ahead and rename this API key so we can locate it later on in case you want to delete it or reuse it. This is our API key. We are going to copy it and we are going to change the permission for this. We're gonna give it full access. Since we have to send and receive data, we have to give it full access. If it was just to read data, it's okay the way it was. So that's our API key, okay? Let's go back into our N8N. Let's paste our API key right here. Here we go, let's go ahead and save this. Okay, let's close it. Now we're connected and it's gonna give us a list of the forms that we have available. In this case, we've just created this form, N8N. So we're going to select it, and we're gonna resolve the data and only answer. So that means that it's not, gonna be, it's not going to be partial answers, it's gonna be a complete one. We also have settings for this. If you want to add some notes here in case this is a special form that you want to have available, or if you have a duplicate of the form and this one's a bit different, well, you might want to add some notes. Do you want to display the note in the flow? That's helpful. Always output data, execute once, so that means it's only gonna do it once. In this case, we're gonna leave it, leave it open because we want it to trigger each time that the form is submitted, okay? Do you wanna retry on fail? If not, just leave it off. Continue on fail, that means if something fails, it's gonna continue the workflow. 
In this case, we don't want to do that. But if you'd like to, well, you just enable it. So we have the parameters. Let's go ahead and execute. And right now it's waiting to receive data. That way it knows what to do with that data. So what we have to do is fill out our form once so it captures that data. So let's go back into our John form account. This is our form. We're gonna go into publish, open in a new tab. And we're gonna fill this out with my data. So my name is George Aguilar and I'll just add a random phone number and I'll add a random email. Okay, let's go ahead and submit it. Let's go back to our N88 and there we go. It just received the data. So the first name, last name, the phone number and the email. That's the information that we receive. And we're able to view this in a list form and also JSON, all right? So we have that information there. Don't worry, it's not complex. Once you've connected, it's super easy, okay? Let's go ahead and close this. So right now we have configured the trigger. That way, every time that that trigger is triggered, well, it's gonna start the automation. But what do we want it to do next? Okay, here comes the fun part. There's so many things that you can automate with that I'm going to show you. For this case and for demo purposes, I am going to connect with HubSpot. So in this case, you're gonna understand how to do it and what this is capable of. So again, let's search for HubSpot. Here we go. And we're gonna use HubSpot API. Again, we're gonna create a new account and it's gonna ask us for the API key of HubSpot, okay? So let's go for that API key. Let's go into our HubSpot account and you're gonna head on over to the top gear icon. So let's click on it. Here we go. And on the left side, we're going to be able to view integrations. We are going to open up this menu and we're gonna be able to view API key. So let's go ahead and select it. Here we go. And we have an API key right here. We're gonna click on show. Okay, let's tell it we're not a bot. Let's copy this API key. And then just in case that you don't want to use this API key later on, we can go ahead and rotate the key. So that means it's gonna delete the past one and create a new one. That way, none of the applications have access to it anymore. So, so okay, we have the API key. Let's go to N88. Here we go. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's close it. And we are going to tell it the source. We're gonna keep it on. We're gonna use contact because we want to create a new contact. And what operation do we want to do with this, okay? So we have several options available here. Do we want to create or update a contact? Do you want to delete a contact, get the contact, get all contacts, get recently created, updated, or search for contact? In this case, we want to create or update a contact. What does update mean? That if a contact is the same email, but the name has changed or the address of the phone, it's gonna update that data. And now it's gonna ask us for the email variable. This email is going to be captured from our trigger, from JotForm, okay? So we need to tie that in, okay? So let's click on this little gear icon. We're gonna add an expression, okay? And we're gonna search for our current node, the input data from JSON. And this one is the email field, okay? So we've added that expression and now we've connected it. So there we go, we have that data available. So that way it's gonna send that information to there. We can add another field if we like. So for example, we have all these available fields to tie it. So that means that if your form has any of these um, fields available, we can tie that together. So in case in this form that we've just created, we have the name. So let's search for the first, well, we have the last name. Let's add another field. Let's search for first. Okay, so we have the first name. Let's go ahead and, and get rid of this one, add it later on. Oh, my bad. Okay, so we're gonna search for first name, add another field last name, and we also asked for the phone on this form. So let's search for phone number, okay? And again, we have to tie those fields from the trigger from our job form. So let's click on the gear icon for first name, add expression, search for current notes, input data, JSON, the name. So we're gonna tie it to first name, there we go. And again, we're gonna repeat that and we're gonna search for the last name, so again, let's search for it. Last name, can close it, and let's search for our phone number variable. Expression, as N88 will call it, and put phone number, there it is. Okay, 
So we've just created that and let's grab this data. So it's name, last name, phone number, and the email. If I execute this node right now, it's gonna send that data to our HubSpot account. So let me show you that right now. Let's go ahead, before I send it, I want to show you the settings. Let's go into contacts, here we go. Okay, so we don't have a contact name, George Aguilar, okay? So once I trigger this, it's gonna send that data. So again, let's go ahead and trigger this, execute node. There we go, the workflow has executed successfully. Let's go back into our HubSpot. Let's go ahead and refresh it. And here it is, the name, George Aguilar with the email test at test.com. The phone number, we don't have a contact there. And there we go, that is the data that we've sent right now. Okay, so what's happening right now? Basically, we've just made an automation with N8N and it's gonna be triggered every single time. The last step that we have to do on our N88 account is activate, okay? So I've just activated this. This is a basic automation workflow. Let me go ahead and fill out the form really quickly again. So let's go into our form. Let's open in a new tab. And in this case, we are gonna call this Johnny Travolta, all right? And again, we'll add a random phone number another email and we're going to submit it. Okay, it's just been submitted and and should be taking care of the process to send that data to HubSpot. So let's go into HubSpot, let's refresh it. And there it is, Johnny Travolta, test2 at test.com with that random phone number has sent the data automatically without having to do anything else. So I don't have to go manually add this to my CRM. So can we do more with N8N? Yes, you can automate and send it to different areas also. So let's just say that you're going to send your data to your CRM and your email marketing automation system. Well, just go ahead and add it right here. And it's gonna add it to all the sequential ones that you add after this. So in this case, if you are using, for example, MailChimp, well, we connect with MailChimp with API. Do you have Mailgun, MailJet, Gmail, um, with Gmail, it's not connecting. What it's going to do is send out an email. Or for example, you know, active campaign, send in grid, send email, send D. And there's a lot of automations that you can add after this. Again, just search for these and you have suggested notes also. So for example, you can do a Slack, send email. Um, you are already getting an email from job form, but if you want to send another email with different type of variables or added variables to this, so for example, if I send an email here, I'll have to add my SMTP credentials from, from email to email and all that to trigger this email. In case I use Gmail, which is much more easier, and this would be recommended if you're just sending emails to yourself. But if you are sending emails as a company, well, you want to add your SMTP details, so it has your custom domain name on that email. So again, for example, let's choose Gmail. So in case you want to send with Gmail, you have to add your auth to API to connect with Gmail. So several things that you can do here. Now, what if we want to do something in between? How about a delay? Because, well, you don't want to send that data over right away, or maybe you want to do something with it specially and you want to add a delay, that is possible. So I just click the little plus button and I'll search for delay, and it's called wait here on AAA. So let me select it. And it could be after time interval at specific time. So you can set a specific time to do this. Um, let's just say that you want to do these overnight. Well, you can set a time for it. So specific time, you go ahead and select it and that is possible. Do you want to send it on webhook call? So every single time, what waits for a webhook call before continuing? Okay, so we'll wait for credential amount and we can set the wait amount here. Once we set it, for example, to one, well, right now it's waiting one hour to start the flow and send that data. So it's going to receive it right away, but it's gonna wait one hour to send that data. Or if we set it to minute, well, now it's going to wait one minute to send over that data, and so on and so forth, right? So if we set it to one minute or seconds, for example, one second, we can execute it. There we go, it's gonna wait one second and it's going to do it. Now, you can see that this wait node has been added in the middle, like I mentioned before. It's going to receive the trigger right away. It's gonna wait 
In this case, one second, because that's how I set it up, it's gonna send the data to HubSpot. And again, we can send, we can add those weights in between all of these. Now, can we do more with this? Yes. Let me click on this little plus button. We can add a really useful node, which is called if, okay? What if does, it splits the information depending on use cases. So for example, if I add a condition to Boolean, date and time, the number, the string. So for example, if the value of, let's go current node, input parameters, JSON, and we're gonna choose email, okay? So if the value, this one right here, is equal to or contains or ends with or not contain. So for example, in this case, we can say, if it doesn't contain the at symbol, well, it's gonna do something else, right? That's pretty cool that we have that. That way we can avoid sending um, results if something is missing. In this case, for example, JotForm wouldn't let you send that field without the correct email. But in, in this case, I'm just showing you a demo demonstration of what could happen, okay? So we can execute it that way. Do we want to add another condition? So again, with another stream here. So if, for example, let's just say the last name, current node, input data, JSON, last name, okay? And we could say if it's empty, it's gonna do something else. So let's execute this just for testing purposes. Let's close it. And now we have two variants of this, okay? So if one is true or false, it's gonna go to a different place. So we have another plus button here. So let's just say I want to divide these because I want to do something else. If it's false, well, we want it to do something else. Maybe we want to send it to a different system. Um, maybe you want to verify the email. Maybe you want to do something like that. For example, um, let's choose if it's false. Well, we wanted to, there we go, mail check. That could be a system. Again, we add the credentials for this, the API, so we can connect and we tie, obviously, the variable from the email so it can verify it. So in this case, if everything's fine, it's gonna go with the workflow, it's going to wait, and it's gonna send that information to HubSpot. If something is wrong with the email, well, it's going to verify that email. And that way we can split again, use more conditional logic, do more things, and you're good to go. So in this case, like I mentioned before, it's already active, we can go ahead and save it, and that's automated. So every time that the JOT4 form is filled out, it's going to trigger, so the first step, and it's going to continue. And in this case, it's gonna use the if then conditional logic. So if this happens, do this, and if this happens, do that, okay? And that's how it's going to work. And like I mentioned before, it's really useful that there's available this system that's open source, that if you don't have a need to pay for cloud service, you can use the desktop app or the self-hosted if you want to install it on your own server. And it's unlimited, no, uh, no options to pay, it's just free, okay? And if you don't want to go through a lot of trouble and you want to use a cloud version, well, there's a sign up form and it shows you what it's going to cost you month to month for the amount of triggers that you are going to use. But there you go. That is how you use N8N using JotForm. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials.